is the veteran service officer, and that is the kind of stuff Commissioner Marshall has uh, added to the list, and uh, it is a veteran service uh, for providing local veterans with uh, information and available programs. Is that correct? That's correct. Well, I'm sure. I'm basically uh, this, this officer, a veteran, Definitely uh, be there to assist veterans in navigating the whole federal process, all the federal programs, and help them get their, their benefits and uh, assist them in, in, in that go between that's officially uh, you know, supported by the federal government, actually. Uh, they, they're actually looking to uh, send funding that's specifically for each county that has a, a veteran service officer. So uh, it's a win win, supported by the federal government, so I think it would be a great thing for us to look into. Our veteran population, I think at last count, was around 9,000. And what we have heard um, in working with some of the agencies, uh, as well as whenever we visited the Baker Center in, in Warner Robins, that things can be so difficult for them that they just give up. And then they certainly are no citizens. Our mission certainly owes them a debt for their service, and they're not receiving the services that they should because the system is so hard, as Commissioner Marshall mentioned. Is this like a federal grant to apply for, or is this a federal funding on a year basis? Or? Yes, that's to my understanding, they, they allocate about 50000 uh, but uh, and then for the counties to utilize specifically for the district service officer. But you have to so uh, would the officer be an employee of the county? Uh, I guess it's, it's more of uh, they, they work work for the county. Uh, it would be advantageous for us to house them. I don't know exactly where they would be at. Uh, but I can get more information about that aspect of it. But I know that it was like a fifty thousand dollars allocation uh, for that position. So Commissioner Evans is asking about the university. The university does have someone who's a veteran student point of contact. Wiregrass has someone too. But all of, of the, uh, the positions in the community that are related to that are kind of also related to the discipline of what that agency provides. Like, for instance, with the university more towards education. This is kind of a comprehensive approach that also includes crisis counseling availability, um, suicide. medical, all suicide prevention, all of those things are, and it, it's, it's a one-stop shop. So you would go in and, and this person would have good relationships with those other points of contact around the community to be able to, to funnel them in the direction. But, but to always be a person that if you got to that office and there was a roadblock or something you get, couldn't get through, you could come back to this veteran services officer and say, okay, I went and talked to the person you told me and I couldn't get there from here, so what do we do now? It's just another, it's someone for them to come back that can, can help them or send them in another direction for the service. And, and this person also, and, and that's a big help, some of those part of each veterans that are homeless, those, some of them, uh, I would say Vietnam era guys that kind of, you, you don't really see nowadays in the Korean War, war guys, and then they can help them navigate the paperwork that may have been lost to don't really have good records, basically, uh, from when they were in. And we are in one of those tricky areas for the, um, the cards that are available to them for medical services, because we are just close enough to the VA hospitals in North Florida um, for them to have to go to those hospitals to get a lot of their medical benefits. But, you know, we know from the program that Mr. Coons has out with Ohio that some other volunteer to, when they bus those veterans down there and back, it's just not practical, especially for the age population that Commissioner Marshall um, mentioned, for them to get there on their own and get back. And so, again, there are people who are not getting services, not getting medication, they're not classes, things like that, that they should because of that. Uh, I'm going to bring this up because I've always kind of struggled with it just a little bit. Um, and I'm not a veteran, so I, I don't quite understand all that. But if, if you, we have citizens here in our community that qualify for Medicare health care. They're 66 and a half years old. They could go to a local doctor. They could go to South Georgia Medical Center. 
however they choose, though, to go and make the trip down to the Veterans Hospital in Gainesville or to Lake City for those health care services. And I know it's because if they choose to go that route, then we don't have anything here for them, but we're right there on that edge, so they have to go there. So it can depend on um, the it's a copay issue, depending on what version of Medicare they have and what their copays are for what services. A lot of them are on fixed income, so they just simply can't afford the copays. It can also be a coordination of benefits issue if Medicare knows that they qualify for veteran benefits. Sometimes Medicare would require a denial before Medicare would pick up and pay. So there's some things that you have to get through that. I can tell you, Chairman, from having kids who are in the service, mm -hmm. when the military systems can be so complicated that they that the service has people who are on the bases to help the people who are still in the military navigate the waters. Certainly, it's no simpler for the people who are outside, but yet, without these veteran service officer positions, they don't have anyone to help them like they did when they were in. Um, I sat on the phone before with grandchildren who were staying at my house, and I had to call states away because of the way child care is set up now to get a referral, to wait on the phone for 30 minutes to get transferred to someone else. And what I finally figured out was is if you want a pediatric referral so you can actually take a child to the doctor in the child care, you just better tell them that the child's got a fever. Because anything else, you're on a pediatric waiting list, and it can be two or three months if there's not pediatric appointments in your, in your area available. For a veteran. Or for, for a military spouse. Yes, yes. So that, that's how complicated it can be for people who are in the military. So certainly whenever they're out, it's no simpler. It's a and, and I go further and say look, a lot of veterans, uh, they, 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 they do exactly like the same said, they got their own benefits. Say like uh, Mark, everything is great, but the day comes that they really do need a disciple to get help in the head, right? Whether it's because they don't want the issue that they're dealing with to be known locally, or, or, or perhaps if it's a mental issue. We don't necessarily say like have those vet centers here either. Uh, which are dedicated specifically for the mental illness type of you know, effects. You know. Long story short, when, when you do go there, it's like everybody sits in a big room. Everybody kind of, you kind of, you know, in a sense. That, that uh, sense of being oh, anonymous no. or whatever, it ain't quite there, uh, which is something that we kind of. Well, I, I just, I mean, the bottom line, I, I'm just, I've just always struggled with it, and, and Mark and Rob picked it on it, but you just like Mr. Marshall has said, a great opportunity. You don't go to VA Wednesday. Never used my VA. There you go. So my point is, is that, is that when the opportunities are better for those individuals in a local community where the community itself would be able to benefit from those services that's provided, then why is it that that some of these veterans makes the decision to go to. So it's very, it could very much be a socioeconomic issue. So not even on Mr. Weisenbaker, but he's had the means to go to the doctor and get the treatment that he needed either through his whatever insurance. He's never been down to the point where his VA benefits were his last resort for medical care. And for a lot of these people, they're on the lower end and it's their their only resort for medical care. I get it 100%. I get it 100% if you do not qualify for Medicare. I, I, I got that. You know, I've got a friend of mine that four years in the Navy, basically retired, whatever you want to call it, at like 57. Well, he went to the VA clinic. He lives in Florida. But he went to the VA clinic because it was cheaper for him to go to the VA clinic to get his medicine and his benefits than to see a primary physician there in his community. Mm -hmm. that was so just, that's a federal policy change. So keep in mind that Congress is funding Medicare, Medicaid, yeah. which some of these also qualify for Medicaid, and they're also funding the VA. So whatever rules that Congress puts in place between those different agencies determines where people fall out in that system. Yeah. Now, you're always going to have the, the exception to that. So I know someone who could afford to probably 
buy a different pair of eyeglasses every month if they wanted to, and they'll go forward to, to the VA to get free yeah. eyeglasses. Well, I mean, there are, and I don't think that's what the system was intended okay. to, to be, and I, I think that, that that's not the exception to the rule. The bigger population of people that you have is that the VA is their only option, sure. and that um, it, a lot of it is mental health. Mental yeah. health, I can tell you even from our own plan with us being self-insured, um, private insurance and even Medicare don't pay much for mental health. You, you know, you're a part of the yeah. mental health sure. system. So a lot of, of that is, and I think that's why people give up on the system because they have mental health issues and they can't get through those barriers. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not going to solve the problems of uh, the health care system in the middle of here. Right? Uh, I mean, we're talking about a service officer. Yes. Yeah. But I'm just going to bring it back to the, the, the service officer uh, example. Um, uh, they are beginning to pay local, say, uh, physicians or uh, what have you to provide VA services. Uh, but, you know, say, to get that process initiated and all, you have to contact, say, let's say or somebody else on the phone that you will never see or what have you. Uh, this person will be there. Say, for instance, like when I had an appointment uh, and the individual, they scheduled a community uh, appointment here. Uh, well, when I got ready to go to the appointment, all of a sudden, that person doesn't, that particular doctor doesn't accept VA. But that person that was on the phone never knew that, or, or would have known if they were here locally, if they were involved. So don't get me wrong, still having to go to uh, Tipton. But you know what I'm saying? They, 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 they know the area that they're working in. Basically. But you know that some people have thought that that is the same because last year, year before, so many veterans was coming to him because they was homeless and they needed services. So, uh, I, I'm fine with it. I just also, but, but I am conscientious enough about it that I just want to make sure that there's not, that we're, that we're not reinventing the wheel with this position that we're, if we consider this and look at moving forward with this, that this is a need because there are no other opportunities. Right. No, I totally understand what you're saying. No, I agree. And, and that's, what, that's, what, that's what I think the goal is. They're going to go to more, um, more positions locally versus VA doctors, but that's how they're going to try to address some of the mental health. But the big shortage, the issue is, is the shortage of mental health professionals, as well as any other things. But they don't even like the local community, but they have that person that has that connection with those individuals in that county. That, that Sounds like we need more information, more data. Okay. That's why I like more information. <laughs> okay, anything else?